Yeah, I'm losing my anatomy edge. of a meme stock. The uh, smoke has cleared. The the dust has settled on stocks like GameStop and um, AMC. And and that's not to say that the volatility, all the movement, is over. It's just we saw the big run up last week, Pete, right. and it's come back. Uh, to earth a little bit yesterday and today. And so I thought it's a great opportunity for us to check out the characteristics, really go deep uh, on these stocks and also look at more recently silver and the small precious metals futures, which yesterday 10% up move today, 10% down move and see where we can get context from and where that context can lend to some potential opportunity for the next bout of this. Because I don't think that this is over, Pete. Um, we, we've seen a, a, a huge influx of new retail participants. It's very exciting for you and me. I'm super excited for this to continue. And I, I do, do you feel like the, the, the party is over and, and that's the end of it? Or, or do you think oh, that we'll I, see I, a lot more activity like this? I don't, you know what, I think we'll see bouts of it, but I, I, you know, the coming back to earth of, as you mentioned, uh, Jimmy and uh, uh, AMC and Silver now, uh, you know, back to basically where we were uh, pre-Friday. So uh, I think speaks to a little bit of what we talked sure. about. And, you know, we actually looked at $70 calls in Silver that were interesting yesterday. We didn't get filled on yeah. them. Uh, but, uh, I think everything you had mentioned to me, everything we had looked at is trading at about a penny right now, which is a nickel. Sure. So, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll see this. Um, but the, the, you know, I, and I think you made this analogy, the dive back to earth. When, when we first started to see the tweet storm from our former president, markets would have these wild yeah. generations. By the end of it, it was just like, eh, here we go. So, uh, it's a diminishing I, I return the, type of thing, right? Right. I think we're going to see, continue to see that. We may see these things pick, poke up their head. The fact that, you know, it was an interesting unfolding because we talked about a lot of times we see these, we see that print up to $30 silver and it gives it all back in an hour. We didn't see that. It took several yeah. days to unwind, which was something I hadn't seen before, but it's interesting. It, it, I think we'll see opportunities, but I think this is a, does this quickly and it's a good question, become a cautionary tale. Like, yeah, got marked up, got marked down, and that's pretty much it. Well, so so let's uh, with all of that in mind, let's see with this cautionary tale, very uh, not cautionary, very beneficial tale for a lot of people who rode the wave higher in some of these stocks and got out at the best time. Right. I want to dissect this to make these things known for future events like this because I will agree with you, Pete. The next time an event like this occurs, instead of GameStop jumping, and when we'll get into it a, a little bit here, instead of GameStop jumping two thousand percent, it might be a different stock that jumps, you know, two hundred. 300 percent right. similar to pete was alluding to the fact that uh when former president trump uh he started tweeting about uh companies and stocks back in 2016 and 17 um first you would see you know boeing move huge off of these tweets and then after a couple of weeks it's like right. stuff is moving off of his tweets but it's a diminishing effect and and i think we'll maybe see this because uh, i don't think that this is over with i think that uh retail participants will continue to try to push around markets here oh, as they should but uh what you see at first blush here pete is wow AMC up 500%, GME at its highs up almost 2000%. And they have both given back a lot recently, but keep in mind that GME, uh, GameStop, even being cut in half today, literally down 50% today, um, is still a hundred dollar right. stock that used to be an eighteen dollar stock earlier this year. So uh, that being said, still a great amount of influence, even with a little bit of the uh, falling back down to earth. And now, Pete, this is where I want to start dissecting things. I mean, I don't, I don't remember, uh, or, or I don't know because I, I wasn't alive uh, half a century ago. Uh, but when you were in grade school, did you ever uh, get the scalpel out and, and dissect like uh, a worm or a pig or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, we had the fetal pig sure the pig yeah and and so what we're going to do here today is is kind of is is get the gloves and the scalpel out and look at gme amc silver and small precious metals you always and loved see, the formaldehyde didn't you that smell i you hated it it was just, well, 
I can remember being at St. Ignatius in Chicago, oh. and it was always a specific time of year because uh, the whole science wing just stunk. reeked for like two weeks. It was it was absolutely awful. Thankfully, a less smelly uh, process here. Um, so what your you mom see had here, this is high hopes of you being a surgeon. And look at that. Look yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm by no means a surgeon. I can barely I'm so not looking forward to the vaccine, not because I, I, I'm super excited to have it. And I think everybody uh, uh, should uh, go get the vaccine, but I can't. Can't even look at shot. a needle. I pa- yes. I pass out every single. The they tested my blood uh, like a couple of months ago, and I passed out completely cold. It's crazy. I'm wow. such a, a wimp. But anyways, these these stocks here, Pete, not wimps at all, especially around the opening. Now, what we've seen here in AMC and GameStop uh, up until today is they open higher than their prior close. What I've seen actually is I think the last five trading days. Uh, in a row, AMC opened higher than its prior close. And I think in GME, it was four out of the last five opening right. higher than its prior close. And uh, yeah, and, and and these two have actually closed lower than their open the last four straight days. So they're already, I've got some really intriguing attributes. And Pete, I want you to, to be kind of the uh, the uh, psychologist behind these moves, because I think it says something very specific that you have stocks at the 8.30 central uh, US, wherever you're trading, the US stock market open. They're opening higher than their prior close by a good amount usually, but by the end of the day, they're closing lower than that open. What does that tell you that there's a lot of bullish interest at the start of the session, and then that interest kind of tapers off throughout the day? Yeah, and I, I think in particular to a stock, different than a future, is this overnight session in these stocks. And you'd see these overnight sessions, which are incredibly thin to begin with, especially thin in stocks like this, that very few participants actually have access to. And you see these the, the spike highs were all made uh, in those overnight sessions. So yeah. the, the true you know exponential highs. So I think that opening piece is a little bit of that follow through is guys who had, you know, been able to take advantage of that small subset of selling those stocks, taking them back, and then seeing a little bit of, you know, and I think, Frank, it's interesting too, a little bit of that self-reinforcing thing that the, the market had a higher pullback and held on to those highs. And then a little bit of the profit taking as you rolled into the end of the day. Yeah. I think what was different than what we see a lot in moves like this of, you know, you think about 2000% in hindsight, it seems if you had just drawn that chart without that, that move from 500 to 2000, you would have thought it was the sale of the century. Sure. Um, the inability for, uh, at the end of the day, for those stocks to uh, stay where they are, the lower end of the range for the day, and then open up in that lower end of the range, that tends to, in my mind, show a little bit of traditional exhaustion. We didn't see yeah. that here. So I, I think, you know, where the market ends up, and where it opens up the next day is an interesting piece of this puzzle. And today we saw that market have a hard time sustaining an unchanged day, even during the sure. thin overnight session. And then the selling continued. And, and you know, what we're seeing here, I, I understand a lot of uh, the, the story over the last couple of weeks is the, kind of the camaraderie of holding these stocks up. You know, there's a lot of uh, stuff that I'm seeing online where it's like, uh, you know, don't sell out of your your long GME, your long AMC. Right. We're holding the Hold line. Uh, I think right. is 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 a is a is a term that is using that is used a lot there, and that is good. I'm not advocating for going against, uh, you know, where you lie on this battle between Main Street and Wall Street, but. I think you would be doing yourself a disservice to not look at the last three days in trading in AMC and GME, seeing that that line is held for the first couple of hours of the trading session, right. and then it's tapering off because here's the next tool that I hope a lot of these people uh, add to their uh, their box here, Pete, which is trading the back and forth. You know, right. you can be long GameStop or AMC and ride that wave like we saw up multiple hundreds of percentage points. But I think you would be really doing yourself a disservice to not take some of those profits like we're seeing here on the open. And then by that close, you can get right into it because what you would want to see if you want these markets to be held up, Pete, what you'd want to see is more of a uniform distribution of these daily price points, sure. right? Like That's an excellent you, I point. Would, yeah. I would rather see if I'm on the long side 
of uh, this retail story, if I'm on Main Street as opposed to Wall Street, I'd rather see GameStop in this example, for instance, Thursday, what a real wacky day. And you see the missing price points from when these stocks were halted. Uh, it's not, uh, I didn't do anything incorrect on the graphic creation side. Those are all when GameStop and AMC was halted. I'd rather see GameStop, for instance, looking at that left-hand y-axis open at around 300 or 500 and stay there until the close as opposed to, oh, we ripped all the way to 400 or 450. And then it came all the way down right. to $200 by the uh, by the close. And, and so this is just an advocate, like next time we see a meme stock or the next time you see this kind of influence come in, or you see, you know, a multi hundred percent move, you know, look at taking some profits or managing some of those long shares because as we're seeing today and as we've been seeing intraday in all of these markets, I mean, this is deja vu, last three days in a row, opening higher right. and closing lower. Uh, you'd be, uh, for lack of a better term, you'd be a fool not to take some of these profits and then you can always get back in right. uh, as this market has shown we, you. And we always talk about that. Um, I, I think in, in the concept of trading both sides of the market. Now, if you had ridden the first 400% of that and taken it off, who wouldn't have, I mean, in the world of the act and back and forth trader, taken that off? The stretch is that if you're still bullish and like that momentum play, you've got to reach to buy it. There's nothing wrong with trading both sides because you've put, yeah. you've put metrics and your mechanics around it. So I think that's the hardest thing is to, who doesn't take 400% off the table? You know, multiply that by 252 and think about your annualized return on a single yeah. a single occurrence. Well, and that's it, the funny it's, thing. It's a lifetime. You will never have that hit again in your life. But you have to be able to accept that there will be some back and forth. And depending on your bias, you're going to have to trade that tradable range and be willing to accept the fact that you are going to possibly buy something at a higher price than what you felt was a value point to sell at the previous day. That's and when I refer to this concept of trading both sides of the market. That's the freedom to trade both sides. Not that I absolutely. I sold it out and I can never buy back a can never mm -hmm. buy back a share unless it trades lower than where I sold it. Yeah, and this is something I've been advocating for a little bit on uh, my Twitter account, which is like, look at these intraday um, ranges here, because it is, trust me, it is the coolest thing that you could do, as everyone is talking about uh, online, to buy GameStop at $20 and hold it all the way to 500 Like that is, uh, as a trader, that is like the, honestly, the hardest thing that you could possibly do. But what's interesting, Pete, is in that range you have you know let's call it three hundred or four hundred dollars worth of upside there. Look at just the last three trading right. days here. You could have you know if you bought at, at GameStop at twenty or fifty or a hundred dollars, you could sell. For instance, here yesterday, you could sell those shares at three hundred and then buy them back at around two hundred. Or on Friday, you could have sold them at. 400 or 350 and then bought them back around 200 and the same thing with that thursday you could have sold them as high as almost 500 dollars pete and bought them back at 100 or 200 or 250 and right there you have three intraday trades where i'm covering my long position right. and then i'm getting back in and the next day they open another couple hundred dollars higher if you just clip 50 or $100 on each of those occurrences, Pete, you've made the whole difference between right. where GameStop was on January 1st and where it was at its heights because each yeah. of those occurrences is 50 or $100 a shot. It's a matter of not having to hold from $20 to 500 and take all of that risk and right. all of that volatility and back and forth. But you can make that, you know, two or $300 per share simply on the back and forth of the last three days. Absolutely. And I like the fact that you, you laid that out so articulately about the, the increased number of occurrences within a reasonable metric of comfort. If you're going to trade this directionally, a reasonable set of mechanics that you're comfortable with and can stay disciplined around in terms of management, you get the opportunity to participate. And not every one of those scalps or day trades is going to be profitable. We don't care about that. We want the percentages to move first. And we also want the opportunity to trade the back and forth. So I think this is a this is a very good example. So is this. This really yeah. is. Sure, we would have all loved to uh, you know, to sell that three and a half dollar 
to buy the, you know, buy the Friday move, get it three and a half dollars higher, and then turn ourselves around. There's far more of a tradable opportunity here than just that slice. Well, yeah, and this is this is more. I think we nailed the the anatomy here of the meme stock, and I hope that people have their takeaways for the next time this uh, happens. But I just wanted to bring up silver and uh, spree futures, which is a, a great way to uh, trade silver from the small exchange. Um, because this is an example that just sprouted up on Friday, Pete, saw a bunch of activity yesterday. You can see here in Monday's chart, uh, these markets opening up. I mean, above $80 in spree futures, right. Pete, is somewhere that that market hasn't been in months. And then guess what? It came all the way back down to about $78.5 intraday. You could have gotten right back into that silver position. Uh, and now you're seeing today it's, it's even lower. And I, I just hate to watch... You know, um, this I, I love to watch this culture growing, but I hate to watch people get hurt by the fact that they right. think they can only buy once and hold forever because you're seeing the opportunities. These stocks or as we've seen more recently, these metals opening higher and intraday letting you get back in to buy that position again. And you saw the same thing on Friday you know, where you have metals opening uh, much higher, but various points throughout the day, letting you get back into better positions to buy that back. Um, and, wow. and, you know, this all begs the question of, is this how markets will act now? No, absolutely not. You can see that GameStop and AMC uh, today, I think from the open on just getting uh, crushed. But why and do we, I jump from AMC? Right. We had a 40, $45 dollar bet bounce to GameStop any other day. That yeah. would even if you're looking at a thousand dollar underlying, that would have been a big move. So, is there back and forth even now? Sure, we can all look in the past and say, "Oh, those, you know, that was such an interesting sale out there." But I think tradable opportunity is the next trade back down to fourteen dollars. You and I have no mm -hmm. idea, but the back and forth is what we want, and these elastic markets where there's great uncertainty is incredibly powerful. Well, and that's what I want people to take away from today's segment, Pete, is, you know, it might be over for GameStop and AMC. It, it very well could not be. I mean, GameStop, once again, is still up, you know, 500% on the year. Uh, and so who's to, who knows what the next stop will be. But what I more am advocating for is, you know, last week and the week before it was GameStop and AMC. This week, it's silver and some of these metals markets. Next week, it's going to be something else. And right. so you would do yourself uh, so many more favors, Pete, to take these uh, the, this anatomy of a meme stock and lend them to the next market that this happens in, right. as opposed to trying to salvage uh, what's left of AMC and GameStop and just saying, well, now that it's getting crushed, now I'm going to buy it and just hope that it, it runs right. higher again. No, they will, uh, they will bring this vibe to a new market in the coming weeks. Take these takeaways to that market, be product indifferent, and jump in with all this in mind. 